Okay, time for our Fiscal Focus segment brought to you by InfoChoice, your choice of information on Australian consumer finance. Now, this week we're talking investing for kids uh, with a new Aussie micro-investing app allowing under-18s to build healthy financial habits and literacy by making real investments from as little as $5 under their parents' supervision, of course. It's called Drip Invest, and I'm pleased to say its CEO and co-founder, Isabel Charter, joins us to tell us more. G'day, Isabel. Isabel, welcome to the Savings Tip Jar. Hello, hello, good day, and thank you so much for the invite. It's great to be here. Thanks for joining us. Um, all the way from Paris, I understand it. Uh, we can touch on that a little bit later, um, but we'll start off the podcast with a bit of a personal note. Uh, what were your money lessons like as a kid, uh, But what and what did you wish you knew about earlier? Yeah, of course. I guess since I was a kid, my parents never had a lot of information around, you know, um, making good financial investments. So I've learned a lot about the importance of saving and taking care of money. I come from Brazil, where the financial situation can be quite harsh sometimes. And you you go around and you see people that are really struggling. So understanding the importance of dealing with money and savings definitely part of my upbringing. However, concepts more focused on growth and investing were never really part of my reality. I suppose, Isabel, that probably fed into your you know, decision to launch this platform called Drip Invest. So can you just run us through exactly you know, how the, the app works and, and how it can help kids and their parents uh, learn to invest? Yes, 100%. I know how hard it was for me to break this barrier to start investing and to to get over the fear of potentially losing my money and even making the right decision. A lot of the times we don't make the right decisions or we don't make any decisions because we're just paralyzed by fear or we just want to make the best decision ever and then again, we don't act. So the whole idea for DRIP is to allow parents to give kids the early exposure that could change that. With early exposure, we can build confidence, we can build good habits. You know, building discipline is one of the biggest challenges for the next generation. They're so used to having everything immediate that having the discipline, the long-term thinking is, is quite hard. So this early exposure under parental supervision can really, really help with that and giving them the knowledge because you are scared of what you don't know. But if you start learning simple terms from a young age, this will help you build the confidence in order to start acting later. The whole idea of DRIP is parents are the ones that always start and create an account. After parents create an account, they can give under 18s access. So they have two different environments. The teenagers, the kids, they are able to go to their own version of the app. So can, you can download that on their phone or their iPad. It's a view and request only. So they have access to educational tools. They have access to what are all of the 15 investment options. And once they are ready for something, they make an investment request. So let's say they explore all of our investment options and they want to invest in Australia because they know the companies, they want to do something that they are familiar with. So they go and they make an investment request. The parent receives that investment request and then they're able to accept or reject. Only then the transaction is executed. That sounds like a pretty uh, safe way to explore investing for young people. Um, I was reading some of the survey results uh, that Drip Invest did. Uh, so you surveyed um, 700 parents, and uh, although a lot believe that um, kids should be learning, you know, safe and healthy investment habits, uh, 77 admitted they don't know much about investing themselves. So with that in mind, how can sort of they take advantage of, of Drip Invest um, because as you mentioned, they need to approve the investments. But what if they don't know much about investing themselves and they and they don't really know what their kid wants to invest in? How, how can parents educate themselves as well? This is actually one of the things I love the most um, about what we're doing. 
And especially we have a lot of mothers that come to us and ask exactly the same question. If I don't know for myself, how can I teach my kids? And what I always say is that the drip is an opportunity for the family to learn together because the parents also have access to all of the educational resources that we are offering. And we have built a simplified version of investing. So when you go to Drip, it's not overwhelming. We have 15 different investment options that they are based on um, ETF, so exchange traded funds. So they are all buckets with many types of investments. So you're not really just picking one company. You're usually picking, you know, top 200 companies of Australia, top 500 companies of the US, um, companies focus on sustainability, so we go by uh, by areas and um, parents are able to go and research and learn a little bit more about that investment option. And then because you can invest from, from only $5, you can have the time to build that confidence, right? So pick a coffee per week, pick a value that you feel comfortable with and start learning from that. So if you are someone who, who is not a parent, who is not confident yourself, you can just go and, and put a small value that is not going to break the bank and think of that value as learning. What we usually recommend parents doing is having very clearly defined two types of investments or two types of money that you're saving. One, your main goal is the learning. So the biggest return that you get from DRIP is your kids' knowledge and the confidence that they will have when they're making real money. Then you have another bucket, which is your, bu your bucket for investment. So let's say you actually saving to help your kids, um, to help your kid with their first mortgage. So for that, those buckets are different and you may wanna behave differently with them. So if you're investing $5 and your main goal is learning, maybe you can give your kids more freedom. And even if you don't agree with what they're doing, that's okay. Because if they put $5 in, let's say, crypto, that we all know it's quite volatile, you know, can go up and down and they lose a little bit of money, that could be a great opportunity to learn. Why did you lose 50 cents? How do you feel when you lose 50 cents? Um, but again, if you're talking about I'm helping them save for their first house or because they want to go study in Europe, then you don't want to be taking that many risks and maybe you don't want to give them that much freedom. You want to talk to your own financial advisor and you want to make the choices that you believe are a little bit better for them. So having those two um, pockets of money very clearly defined I think just helps parents feel more comfortable about what they're doing and how they're helping their kids. So Isabel, on the mention of, of crypto, which is obviously is a notoriously volatile asset class. So does that mean these kids, you know, if they if they want to, they can invest 100% of, of their money into, into crypto ETF as long as they have their parents' permission? As long as they have the parents' permission, they could invest all of 100% of the money they get <laughs> in crypto. And uh, I, I have a story for that, actually. We had uh, one parent sharing that he was giving his kid $5 every week, and he told him he could do whatever he wanted. So week one, $5 in crypto. Week two, $5 in crypto. <laughs> week three, $5 in crypto. Oh, no. As you can imagine, crypto went up, and he was stoked, and then crypto went down. And... <laughs> On week four, he went to dad and say, hey, dad, maybe this week we can put it in Australia 200. And I think that is the perfect example of what we're trying to achieve. Kids are exposed to crypto today. They will be hearing about it. With DRIP, parents can choose if they will even see that. So we have a few different parental controls in place. The first one, even before the minor has access to it, is parents can choose what the child will be able to see or not. So you can literally just um, hide it. And your kid, if you don't want your kid in crypto, you hide it and they won't even know that crypto exists on Drip, right? Um, so you have that possibility. You don't want them investing in Asia, 
you just you know remove that. You don't want emerging markets, you just remove that. So from the 15 options, you can pick and choose what type of exposure you can give your kid to. But considering you are a parent that is okay with your kids learning about crypto and having exposure to that, it can be quite a different experience telling them, hey, be careful. Maybe you don't want to put all of your eggs in one basket. Maybe you want to diversify because if crypto goes down, that's 100% of your money. Telling them is one thing. Having them actually experience losing that money is a completely different learning experience. And uh, we'd rather do that when they lose $5 than when they lose 5000 or 50000 So the whole point, again, is what's the best way for them to learn? That's a really good point um, on, on what Drip does in that as a parent, you can block off investment classes if you want. That's That really stood out to me. Um, that was quite interesting. I, I didn't know that existed um, in the market before, but yeah, it got quite interesting. Um, my next question is, kind of around the whole crypto mania at the moment. Uh, in 2021, we saw the rise of those kind of meme stocks like GameStop and AMC and um, all those kind of stocks where people are getting really, um, they're treating it more like a game rather than, you know, a boring, you know, Commonwealth Bank share or a boring BHP share. It got a lot of people excited about the share market. Do you think that that's a positive thing? Um, and especially for younger people uh, with, with Drip Invest, do you think that's a positive thing? Or do you think that there's a, a, a lot of risks there? I say both. <laughs> <laughs> I always think it's positive when we see people discussing and talking more about investing. However, the way that it's done can be can be quite risky, right? Especially when the risks are not talked about. I think the biggest concern is when you have, you know, influencers and people talking about crypto as if it's safe to put your money, as if it's guaranteed that you're going to have astonishing returns. That That's a problem. If a highly influential, I don't even know if that's a word in English, forgive my English second <laughs> language. <laughs> Um, if you if you have you know a, a 13, 14 year old that is incredibly vulnerable and very easy to influence by social media and people they respect and admire, and they are saying you can double your money in a week, that is dangerous because they're going to believe that that is possible. So another reason why it's so important to give them early exposure is to give them a sense of reality. It's a reality check because if it's all in your imagination and you only hear, hey, it's so easy to make money in crypto. Everyone is making money in crypto. You're going to end up believing that. But when you actually put your $5 into crypto and you see it going up and down, and then you will learn that is not as easy as your TikTok influencer told you it was, It's you get a little bit more of a sense of, what's good, what's bad. We have a lot of a lot of teams that come and ask, you know, is is 5% good? Is 7% good? Is 15% good? Like just having a sense of what is little, what is a lot, what is the market, what is expected. That's something that you only learn as you go and the more you do it, the more you get a sense of what is possible and what is good and what is bad and what is your what is your risk tolerance? Because we also see that understanding your, what is your investment profile? What is your risk profile? Am I someone who is willing to lose that much? Am I someone who enjoys the thrill or do I get paralyzed by it? And, and we see, we see a lot of people, not only, um, not only, you know, uh, under 18s, but we see a lot of people who do not invest because they have a sense that they don't want to lose their money. I get that a lot. I don't invest because I don't want to lose my money. And my answer is, yeah, are you familiar with fixed income? Are you familiar with um, ETFs? Are you familiar with being conservative or balanced? And when you don't know that options that are not incredibly high risk exist, 
you only get from from the market this perception of its roller coaster and it doesn't have to be a roller coaster for everyone of course investing investing always carries risk and investing can always go up and down but managing the risk and understanding what are the different strategies that you can do to manage those risks is is super important and that's what we're trying to teach yeah, Isabel, that sort of um, you know reiterates something that uh, Tash Invests, uh, one of our previous guests, was saying earlier about how it is just getting over that first hurdle, uh, that that sort of mental block people have around investing, thinking it's it's only for rich people or it's like gambling, it's you're going to lose all your money, it's too risky. Um, so I guess you know, you know platforms such as this Drip Invest is a good place for people to to understand how it works and, and understand that there are different you know. Uh, risk levels you can take when it comes to investing. It's not all high risk. Um, but um, obviously, there's a lot of micro-investing plaps available in Australia, uh, platforms and apps available in Australia at the moment. So, um, But you know, I'm not sure whether you can really get your kids using them as much. I think as far as I'm aware, for Spaceship, you can... Uh, from age 16, I think is the minimum age. Uh, whereas raise, I think it's the minimum age is 18, but you can set up an account with your kids. So really I'm asking is is, is what separates Strip Invest from these other micro-investing platforms? Drip was specifically designed with learning as a key priority. So the way that we chose the number of investment options, for example, is big enough where you can make regular choices because the learning will come from the choice, but it's also small enough that you don't get overwhelmed. On top of that, we have the idea of the miner having access to their own version of the app under parental supervision. And I think that that is the key difference from everything else that is available in the market. When the miner has their own version of the app, it actually gives them a sense of ownership and control of the decisions that are happening. So they will ask the parents to invest in something. And when that something goes up, they're gonna feel like they, they did something good. And when that investment that they chose go down, they will try to understand what happened so they can learn from for the next time. So again, that feeling of ownership, that feeling of control, that especially teenagers are really, really, craving for makes a huge difference for their learning for sure it sounds like you're a bit of a cosmopolitan worldly woman isabel you know you came from brazil uh english isn't your first language you're in france at the moment uh watching your husband in the olympics which is a massive achievement um my, my question to you is like i'm i'm learning spanish at the moment and just learning a language is hard enough let alone coming to Australia or another country and having to launch an investing app. How, how was that just personally for you, launching an app in a, in a country where the laws are different, um, the language is different, and there's all these complexities? How was that for you? Um, and how are you uh, learning still? Very hard. 100% uh, learning a language is hard. Building a startup is, is hard. That's actually not my first startup. So I've always been super passionate about entrepreneurship, innovation, and finances. Um, in Brazil, I was actually teaching finances at, 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 a, at a university there, a marketing university. So most students absolutely hated and they were traumatized by numbers. So it was, I think, my first experience of trying to digest concepts and making it more interested for people who never thought of themselves as you know, numbers people. I think getting here and starting a new life, as you mentioned in, in English, definitely comes with the challenges. And starting a fintech, I don't know if I would have done it if I knew how hard it would have been. <laughs> um, I think just the compliance side of it, the legislation, it's incredibly hard. And because we are dealing with minors, we have to be twice as strict in everything that we do. Um, thankfully, we are backed by Better Labs Ventures, which is RACWA um, Corporate Venture Fund. So we have big backing behind us that really helps us not only with the funding, but mostly with the guidance, the mentorship, 
um, the support and even the very strict requirements in order for us to launch. So I just had to learn so much about Australian regulation. I had to learn so much about all of the processes and how the financial system operates here. And it is quite different from Brazil. But I feel very, very fortunate to have the proper backers. And I feel very fortunate to to be able to deliver something that is incredibly required and it could it could change so many lives we we didn't touch yet uh, about this but if we look at the statistics you know 45 percent of australian adults today are considered financially illiterate so that's 8.5 million people who don't understand basic financial concepts like interest rates inflation diversification and that's part of our daily lives and that has a huge impact especially when we consider the increased cost of living you know um the the cost of the cost of financial literacy there was a recent research from Allianz that showed that for a person who don't have basic financial literacy and earns the average australian salary if you have the average australian income you could be missing out in over seven thousand dollars a year from making for or from not making appropriate choices with your money again i'm not talking about making more or less money i'm talking about making average money in australia and just knowing what to do with that so we are living in a moment where you know um the cost of everything is 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 growing um australians that's that was something that for me stood out quite a lot how australians love property it's a very cultural thing um probably because until a few decades ago it was incredibly accessible in brazil is not that accessible so we don't talk that much about it i don't grow up thinking that i can buy my own house at age 25 because it's very very hard to do that in brazil but here it's still possible however this has been changing so um up to 2010 um most people could actually buy and give the first deposit of their houses without any help from the bank of mom and dad. And right now, ABS predicts that 400, over 400,000 of today's teenagers will still be living with their parents by the age of 30 and 40. And that's because today, over 60% are also asking for the help of the bank of mom and dad when you're buying property. So it's getting harder and harder to think of property as an investment. So it's even more important for us to spread the word about other options that are more accessible, that are more available, and people can start with less amount of money. So we need to talk more and we need to teach more. And obviously, you know, investing early can help you build up that deposit to, you know, give you a better chance of achieving that dream of owning property. I mean, I know for myself personally, um, I, I'm I'm really glad that I did start that, that my dad, who happened to be a stockbroker, so that was quite a benefit, uh, taught me the benefits of investing from quite a young age. So um, I know I was able to, you know, boost my deposit uh, quite, quite, quite a, to quite a large extent, not to brag or anything. But anyway, just to, to help me sort of get my foot in the door and, and, and get onto the property ladder. But, um, you know, it, it sounds like, you know, with, with more than half um, of parents believing that, um, you know, developing healthy investment habits for the kids is uh, should be a priority. And uh, meanwhile, 77%, um, you know, meaning that they don't know much about investing themselves. There's obviously, you know, a space for, for, for an investment platform such as Trip Invest. So, you know, really, really hope, uh, you know, to, to see that this platform do well, because it sounds like Aussies are crying out for it. And, you um, uh, really appreciate your time on the uh, on the Savings Tip Chat podcast, Isabel. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. Uh, and also wishing all the best to your husband, Andrew Charter, in goals for the Kookaburras at the Olympics. So, you know, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Thanks, Isabel. Oi, oi, oi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. 
Thank you for Thanks. having me no here. Worries.